Hello, this is Saturday, May 2nd, and thank you for joining us for our Saturday morning service of morning prayer. He is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which he ought to have done, and we have done those things which he ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou, the God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare it unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beg him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this section of Exodus, Moses begins to set up the temple rules and regulations. The first lesson is taken from the second book of Moses, Exodus chapter 29, beginning at the 38th verse. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar. Two lambs, a year old, day by day, regularly. And one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. And with the first lamb a tenth measure of fine flour, mingled with a fourth of a hen beaten oil, and a fourth of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer at twilight, and the offer shall with it a grain offering and its drink offering. And as in the morning... For a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. And it shall be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of the meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you to speak to you there. There I will meet with the people of Israel, and it shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Aaron also and his sons I will consecrate to serve me as priests. And I will dwell among the people of Israel, and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the hand of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. You shall make an altar on which to burn incense, and you shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its breadth, and it shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and around its sides and its horns. And you shall make a molding of gold around it, and you shall make two golden rings for it. Under its molding, on two opposite sides of it, you shall make them. And they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it in front of the veil that is above the ark of the testimony, in front of the mercy seat, that is above the testimony where I will meet with you. And Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. And every morning when he dresses the lambs, he shall burn it. And when Aaron sets up the lambs at the twilight, 
He shall burn it, a regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. And sh you shall not offer unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering. And you shall not pour a drink offering on it, and Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year. With blood of the sin offering of atonement, he shall make atonement for it once in a year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, When you take the census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord. And when you number them, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. Each one who is numbered in the census shall give this, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is twenty jerahs. Half a shekel is an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from twenty years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. And the rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel, when you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives. And you shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel, and shall give it for the services of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for your lives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God! Here in chapter 2 of Luke, we have the birth of Christ in Bethlehem and a sign left by Luke, how Mary was treasuring all these incidents in her heart, which is a clue that when Luke was putting together his gospel, he had gone to speak with Mary and preparing to write it. The second lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, Chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration from Quirinius, was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each of his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the son of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary with betrothed who was a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with a great fear, and the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you the good news of great joy that will be here for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, and you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord 
had made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But what Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God! Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us confess our faith together. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads whom with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty Father, who has given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, to whom alone belong the issues of life and death, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto you for relief. Deliver us, we beg you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to your ministers of healing. Bless the means of cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail is our earthly life, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, our Heavenly Father, the high and mighty ruler of the universe, who does from your throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beg you with your favor to behold and bless your servant Donald Trump, our president, our senators and representatives in Congress assembled, Philip Murphy, the governor of our state, and all others in authority, and so replenish them with the grace of your Holy Spirit, that they may always incline to your will and walk in your way. Empower them plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant them in health and prosperity long to live. And finally, after this life, to attain everlasting joy and happiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the strong tower and refuge of your people, we entreat your favor upon the officers and all who have been enlisted in the service and defense of our country. Ever spare them from being ordered into a war of aggression or oppression. Use them, if need be, as your instruments in the defense of our national life and liberty. But restrain, we beg you, the greed and wrath of man, that wars may cease in all the earth. Watch over also all policemen and law enforcement officers everywhere. Protect them from harm in the performance of their duty. We pray also for firefighters, first responders, and health care workers who protect us and ours from all types of danger. Give these men and women the courage and skills to carry out their duties well and safely. When they must go into the face of danger, be by their side. Watch over their families, reminding them that those who go into danger are in your loving care. This, and this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops, especially Foley, Ray, and Chuck, and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may truly please you 
pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly beg you for all sorts and conditions of men, that you would be pleased to make your ways known unto them, your saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for your Holy Church Universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or state, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We lift up to you, Lord St. John's by the sea and other churches who are going through financial struggles at this time due to the fact that they are not meeting together. We pray for Lynn Blitz, Pastor Mike's mother, who has been taken out of the hospital and brought to rehab. We thank you, Lord, for her good recovery so far, and we pray you will be with her during the rest of her recovery. We pray for the family of Joe Gangloff, Michelle McQuaid's brother, who died last Saturday, the family of Doris Whitaker, for Dolores Mitchell, Louis Fiordimondo, Bryce Myers, Kelly and Richard Gafter, Holly, Buddy, and Haley. For all those who have risked sickness to provide for others at this time, we pray for our family and friends who own businesses that have been so greatly affected by this virus. We especially lift up to you Heather and Al, Larry, Mark, and Bill. We pray for Rachel Rosenberg, for Dominic, Sydney, Heather and Grace, Ariel and Oliver, for Noah, Jonathan, and Brian. We pray also for Phil Sabatka, Pastor Mike Sunkel, who is in hospice and expected to pass away any time now. Please be with the family, with his wife, Jean, his daughter, Wendy, his son, Jeff, and all those who are with him at this time. We pray, Lord, for Ron, who is now entered into hospice. We pray you will be a strength to Linda and all of the Burdick family at this time. We pray, Lord, for Jean and her issues that she is going through now. We pray for Teresa's brother, Tim, who had colon surgery, for Ted and Midge, for Kelly and Eliza, for the Williams family, for Provident Wesleyan Church, and for all those who have been so greatly affected by this coronavirus, that it may please you to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. This we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants. Give humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of all your mercies, that our hearts may be truly thankful, and that we may declare your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name. Mercifully accept us who have now made our prayers and petitions to you, and grant us those things which we have asked in faith according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. This is Noah and Carter. Thank you for visiting John. Bye, see. Church. 
Please remember to support your local parish at this time, especially as most parishes are not able to meet together. It's easy not to remember. If you are part of the St. John's family or you wish to support our ministry, you may do so at the link below or by mailing your checks to St. John's Church. Also, while you're checking out below, please, if you are not subscribed already, please subscribe to St. John's by the Sea and click on the bell icon after you subscribe. Also, feel free to like the videos. That's always a nice thing, and it helps the videos to get promoted through YouTube. Thank you.